Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Anil Dharni about what the role of recruiter will look like in 2023. Anil Dharni, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's a pleasure to be with you today. You're joining us from the Bay Area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the ever-shifting and ever-changing role of the recruiter and what the role of recruiter might be looking like in 2023 as things continue to develop and uh, emerge. As we get started, I wanted to share Anil's bio with everybody. Anil Darney is Sense CEO and co-founder. Sense empowers fast-growing companies to simplify and personalize recruiting through AI-driven talent engagement. Sense has raised over $90 million, led by SoftBank, Excel, and Google Ventures. Before founding Sense, Anil was co-founder and COO of Funzio, which was acquired by GREE in 2012 for $210 million, where Anil continued his work as COO. Prior to Funzio, he led product and design at the third largest social networking company, High Five. Anil has an MBA from MIT Sloan School of Engineering and a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering fantastic background. It's a pleasure to be with you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? No, John, th- uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be on the podcast. Uh, a big fan and a longtime listener. Oh, well, wonderful. And I really appreciate that. All right, let's dive on in. Um, why is the way companies have been thinking about recruiters? Why is that changing? Why is that increasingly obsolete? Uh, and where do you th- see things shifting towards in the coming year or years? Yeah, I think, um, as we all know, the uh, COVID and the pandemic has been a, a pretty big slap in the face of a lot of talent acquisition teams. Uh, they went from quickly firing and laying off a large portion of their recruiters, sourcers, coordinators to realizing, oh my gosh, the world um, really didn't change. And in fact, uh, the the talent situation became worse so, and they had to go back and rehire, right? So I think uh, you might remember even in last year, recruiter, recruiters was one of the hardest job opportunities uh, according to LinkedIn, right? So I think uh, the world has changed dramatically where talent acquisition teams are starting to reinvest in automation, driving efficiency, uh, while hoping to free up the time of recruiters and sourcers to become more strategic to the business, right? The only way companies grow is if you can hire and find the right talent to help you grow. So growth is basically now dependent on the talent that you're able to acquire. Um, I think the second piece of this equation is companies over the last two years have also struggled with keeping their current employees, right? And realizing, hey, it's not just about, uh, you know, constantly thinking top of the funnel, who can we find new? Uh, but also thinking about internal mobility as sort of the next phase. Like, what do we know about our own employees? What do we know about the current skill sets? What do we know about their potential? So recruiters now have to sort of pan both sides. Like, I need to understand new people that are coming from top of the funnel, but I also need to understand my own employees because maybe they might be great fits for the current opportunities within the company. 
And the last thing I would say on this front is where and where sense plays a big role is it's not all about full time work. So the kind of nature of work is also consistently changing, right? So the people that were part-time workers can become full-time workers. The folks that were full-time workers maybe now want to be part-time workers. So you got to look at talent holistically on both sides um, of the coin, where can I supplement my work? Can I uh, with, with, you know, just both full-time as well as with part-time workers? So how can I augment my workforce? So I think those are the three yeah. like, trends that recruiters are facing today. Yeah. And and of course, what you're describing are some of the major meta trends impacting the entire world of work, right? Which of course are impacting recruiters. Uh, so we see, you know, even pre-pandemic, there is uh, in, uh, a steady, you know, increase in freelance gig work that people were doing. More and more people were, were embracing that kind of an approach. Uh, and the pandemic just accelerated that even further. Of course, uh, AI, deep machine learning, automation, robotics, all of those sorts of things were already continually developing at a pretty uh, substantial rate. That uh, Those types of approaches towards automation uh, and their adoption had increased exponentially over the course of the pandemic. Uh, and so that has changed and shifted things even more and so on and so forth, right? All these different things have reshaped what it even, what the world of work is and, and what the modern workplace even looks like. So of course, that's going to impact what recruiters are doing and how they, you know, hopefully are attracting great talent to apply in the first place. But also to your point, like, do, are they actually engaging uh, you know, are organizations engaging and retaining good people? And are they providing career pathways for people, you know, not in the linear kind of upward climb the ladder kind of career pathways, uh, but being a little bit more nuanced about it and understanding the skill sets, the competencies and capabilities of people in, within the organization that might be able to be developed and moved into new roles uh, that previously they never considered, right? So all of this goes into that recruiting piece and it kind of completely reshapes what recruiting even means uh, wow. or what it even looks like, how it's, how it's, built and modeled within organizations. Absolutely. And I think what that feeds us and what we are seeing now in the market is you need to be a lot more data driven, right? So you need to understand the skills of your current employees as well as uh, the future employees that are applying. Um, you need to be much more proactive versus reactive. So recruiters in the past have waited for let the job order, job requisition come in, and then I will react. And now you just need to be proactive all the time. You have to constantly be building your talent pipelines. And again, the talent pipelines are not just external, they're also internal, right? Um, and can you imagine like the kind of conversation a recruiter needs to have with somebody who's absolutely new to the organization, doesn't understand the brand, doesn't understand the culture, doesn't understand what, what happens internally, worse, the conversation you need to have with a person who's actually your current employee, and then you're selling them on an opportunity within the organization, right? So recruiters are like, just have to have this amazing empathy, um, really understand where the company is going, what the growth trajectory is there. And to your point, the career pathing of the employees too. So it's always just juggling those roles. Yeah, so you just started to outline some of those kinds of approaches, the mindset, the tools, the skills that might be necessary with the modern uh, recruiter. Um, but I, I want to spend a little bit more time on that and yeah. and juxtaposition, you know, the current state of affairs with how it, perhaps it, it used to be set up in organizations. Uh, so someone who may have been very successful as a recruiter in the past doesn't that doesn't necessarily directly translate over to their ability to be successful today so what what do you see as some of those common traits previously that perhaps aren't translating over well what are some of those new types of specific competencies that are going to be necessary moving into the future yeah yeah uh, absolutely <laughs> great great question you know I, i'll start with a, a quick anecdote like uh there are times when i've walked in the hallways of some staff one of those some of the largest staffing companies in the u.s and you you look at these recruiting teams and you walk the halls and all you hear is just the buttons being pressed, the keyboards pressing. So recruiters have been spending a lot of time instead of having conversations, entering data, 
right? Entering resumes, um, entering, st changing status updates, uh, versus like actually having conversations and building relationships with candidates or even internal employees, right? So I think that's the big change that we are seeing. Recruiters are looking to adopting more and in talent acquisition teams, adopting more and more technology that can serve to be the assistant that can work, that can do the repetitive tasks and the manual tasks that need to be done and switch the roles to much more being around conversations, around understanding the candidate's preferences and understanding who they are and understanding their skills and then doing the matching, right? So which, what kind of jobs are they uh, best suited for within the company? That's one. Number two, we forget that the other customer of a recruiter is the hiring manager. And also we feel now like, again, the recruiters traditionally have been bogged down by the process. And with the new modern technology, more tools available to them, they can spend more time with the hiring managers trying to understand what exactly are they looking for versus like just spending time on just the job description, which we all know has just been copied and pasted from some old job descriptions, right? So really understanding what kind of skill set do you need um, and then when they have the conversation with the candidate, that conversation being much more meaningful. So again, back to the key traits that we see is they need to be more data driven. They need to serve their customers better and the customers are the candidates and the hiring managers. Um, they also need to have this empathy. And, and, you know, what we are seeing in the candidate market, especially for high volume hiring is it's not about the resume, you know, especially the world has also changed. In the last, um, you know, two years, there's a less and less lower dependency on what the resume says and much more of a higher dependency on what have you actually done? What skill sets have, do you have? What skill sets do you want to acquire? And the last thing I would say is preferences. So when you're talking in manufacturing, in logistics, in warehousing jobs, it's simple questions like, can you actually stand on your feet for eight hours a day? Can you do overtime work? Do you have a commute or transportation available to get you to my zip code or to my warehouse facility? Those are way more important than asking the older questions like, do you have a resume in place, right? So recruiters need to spend a lot more time having conversations, figuring out what the preferences of the candidates are. And also on the other side, talking to managers, hiring managers, and really figuring out what they really want in the talent. Yeah, so it comes back to hiring managers understanding what they want, obviously. Um, that's always been a challenge, I think, uh, in, in finding that alignment. So you're actually recruiting the right types of people in the funnel. Um, uh, but now it's it's as important as it's ever been. It's it's even more important that that alignment is there. Uh, and, I, you know, your, your focus in on these tools and the technologies to assist recruiters, I think is really, really important. Uh, if you're still functioning in the old way, the old school way of recruiting, uh, there's a time and a place for those kinds of approaches, certainly. Uh, but generally speaking, it has to be more data driven, you have to utilize these tools. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure being put on recruiters, uh, they're yeah. simply not going to survive, they're going to burn out if they don't start util utilizing these sorts of uh, tools, uh, so that they can be more efficient and effective in what they're trying to do, right? Yeah, I will, absolutely. And and I, I will say one thing is like, you know, uh, one big skill set is they really need to adopt the new technology, right? So things are moving so fast, but also we hear from the recruiters and sourcers this constant burden. You know, on average, we are seeing anywhere from 15 to 20 different applications that a recruiter needs to know and use in order to run their end-to-end -end recruiting process. Can you imagine that bouncing from one application to the next to the next um, that not only causes frustration for the recruiters and sourcers, they have very low NPS for the tools they use, net promoter score, but also the same problem is faces the candidates. The candidates are bouncing from one application to the next, right? And they're having a frustrating experience. The hiring manager, the hiring manager does not want to log into these systems and give feedback. They're like, can you make this extremely simple for us, right? So that's the challenge for the recruiters is, A, you've got to adopt technology, but at the same time, you know, how many apps can you actually use on a daily basis? So there needs to be some form of consolidation. Um, and I think that's going to be another big trend for 2023. So simplification of the recruiting process through consolidation of apps, um, but 
knowing that, you know, I do need to be uh, pretty familiar with the latest technology. I mean, it's it's amazing. We have recruiters that are using Sense today that are launching AI chatbots. And you should see the delight in their faces. They're like, it's this is incredible. I have no experience in programming, in coding, but with a no-code platform, I'm able to launch AI chatbots that can capture candidates, that can screen candidates. And the expression is just absolutely delightful. Yeah, and you talked about simplifying. And I'm wondering what you see kind of those structural shifts in terms of yeah. how recruitment is is organized within yeah. uh, institutions and what you see shifting in terms of the modern recruiting workflow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the first, I think, big theme that we're going to see in 2023 and beyond is going to be consolidation. So um, again, to the back to the point, like over 15 different apps that recruiters and sources need to use there's a big push in consolidating that. That's number one. Number two, uh, the the rise of the recruiter assistant, right? So a lot of manual tasks um, that is burdensome that today the recruiters do will be overtaken by, will be taken over basically by technology. So they don't have to do that, right? So what do I mean by that? Uh, capturing a candidate on your website or when they apply through a text to apply or when you go to a, a campus recruiting event, Technology can capture the candidate. Technology can screen the candidates. So your recruiters are not having to screen hundreds and thousands of candidates uh, and are only talking to the ones that are actually relevant for the job and for the role. Number two, interview scheduling. Can you imagine how much time talent acquisition teams spend today in trying to do phone screens, in trying to schedule um, you know, interview panels, round one, round two, round three, whatever the case might be, depending on the organization. So let's take that burden out of them, right? So they are going to have to figure out how do I work with my assistant? And this is the new age of an assistant, which is great. Um, number two, uh, they also need to have a deeper understanding of candidate, not just from the skill perspective, but as I mentioned, from their preferences. So I'm not happy, uh, what, what is it that the candidate wants? And not just like, what is it that the company wants, right? And then having match, uh, do the matching based on that. Last time we are seeing, you know, I think uh, the stat is from Indeed, on average candidates are applying to at least 12 jobs at a time, right? So when you're making job application and easier, candidates are starting to apply to lots and lots of jobs. So who will a candidate work with? is the one recruiter that is going to respond the fastest, right? So you got to work with over text. You got to work over WhatsApp. You got to work over TikTok, over um, you know, Facebook Messenger versus the traditional channels that we all think is like email. So that's what's happening. And that's where we feel like the adoption of tools will take place. Yeah, and just to, to reiterate, <clears throat> something that came up a little bit earlier in the conversation, but I think it applies here too, is with all those communication channels that we're adopting to also recognize that we have a, we have different pools of people that we can tap into than perhaps we were even thinking about before. Uh, you know, people internally to the organization through career pathways and pipelines, uh, if we think creatively. Um, but it's not necessarily about headhunting either. Like, it's not like we need to go pick someone off from another organization to come work for us. Are we thinking creatively about gig work, freelance work, contingent work, and having distributed teams where the geographical barriers to work have largely broken down? Can we be recruiting from you know all over the world almost and people who may have their their day job who want to do something as a side hustle they want to do you know they want to make a contribution in a new unique way maybe a creative way that they don't do in their normal job uh, there's so many opportunities if we can think a little bit more creatively about it and then utilize and leverage the tools and the channels to be able to communicate effectively what a what a great point because I mean the the data is by 2027 50 percent of the U.S. workforce will be gig, right? In one way or the other, to your point, they'll be doing that. And and by the way, this data is from Workday. Uh, I just attended the keynote and uh, they shared that uh, because the, the way we all work is changing. Number two is what you're talking about, just the remote and talent is everywhere and access to talent. You can access talent 
in uh, different parts of the world. But then again, can you imagine the challenge for the recruiter? How do I have this conversation? How do I know what is the cultural nuance when I'm talking to talent in Eastern Europe versus uh, in India versus like, you know, here in the US, right? And how do I pitch the job, the opportunity to somebody who maybe wants a full-time role versus somebody maybe who wants it as a gig or maybe who wants it as temporary work for the next six months? Right. So can you imagine what challenges the recruiters are going to face in the future? And they got to adapt um, and they can't do busy work. So they got to get and adopt technology and lead this digital transformation that actually many of the talent acquisition teams, they now know this is the this is the way it's going to be. Um, but that adoption and the digital transformation can't happen soon enough. So recruiters can start switching to this mode where they are now figuring out, okay, how do I hire somebody remotely? How do I hire a gig worker? Um, but that's what is fun. And that's why this job is one of the hardest jobs in the market right now. The level of complexity here has just ramped up so quickly. And, and that brings in all these different traits and skills that you've been describing. The, the ability to just be uh, very quick in agile and adopting and adapting to the new technologies and embracing them, all of that. And just the complexity, as you were just describing around, you know, a dispersed kind of global labor market that you can tap into and all these different types of workers with different varying types of motivations and willingness and availability and such, you know, all of this is just changed very rapidly it will continue to change it just adds to the complexity we need more people ready and willing to lean into that complexity uh, if they're going to be successful in these types of roles so it's super challenging as you said um I, it's not for the faint of heart <laughs> and uh, i hats off to really great recruiters that are out there it's still a great career path it's a great opportunity for people but it's hard and you're going to have to be adaptive uh, if you're going to be successful absolutely yeah. And all this has just been a great conversation. I really appreciate all of the insights that you've provided me and my audience today. Before we wrap things up in the last few minutes, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, uh, where they can find out uh, more about Sense, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you again for, for having me. So I'm just Anil Dharni. Um, you can find me at uh, on LinkedIn or it's anil at sensehq.com. So, and our website is www.sensehq.com. Um, again, you know, as, as John introduced us, we, we help companies that are growing to simplify their recruiting process and also to personalize their recruiting process. So, uh, you know, as, as we've discussed here, it's a really complex world and it's only getting more and more complex. And we really help uh, recruiters and talent acquisition teams free up their time. So our software is really built for that. We go really deep and un try and understand your recruiting process so you can have the conversations and you can have the strategic impact that you need to have. So you're serving both the candidate and the hiring manager the best way you can. So thank you so much for your time and having me. Thank you so much, Anil. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Anil and his team at Sense can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.